Clarksville City Council to order. If you will please stand for our invocation and our pledge. Let us pray. Great creator of all, by whose power all things exist and have their being, you wonderfully created us to live in harmony with creation as good stewards, to live in harmony with all persons in justice and peace. Guide the work of this council, inspire the work of those who serve the citizens of this city, teach us to seek the common good, all for your honor and glory. Amen. 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 Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Ulmer, the roll, please. <coughs> Carrie Hodge, Ward 1. Here. Jay Stiff, Ward 2. Here. Louis Tonsmeyer, Ward 3. Here. Lindsay McDaniel, Ward 4. Diane Tate, Ward 5. Here. Catherine, Ward 6. Here. Thank you, Meredith. The first order of business uh, for council this evening is the approval of our uh, council meeting minutes for our May 4th meeting. And council, you've had these well in advance of tonight and had an opportunity to review them. I do know that during the work session there was one uh, edit that needed to be made from that and any motion that may be put forth should include that edit. So, What was that date, Bob? Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's under the car wash recycle ordinance that we passed last week and two weeks ago. And, uh, Madam Clerk, we add June 1st, 2017. That's on page 8 and 9. Thank you. We make that change. And that was something Mr. Jones found. Thank you. Okay. Is that in the form of a motion to yes, approve sir. with that edit? It is. Make a motion to approve with the edit. Sir. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. That motion carries. Uh, unanimously we have uh, council uh, a rather important task to start off this evening as as you all know our, our good friend and uh, fellow council member Lindsay McDaniel uh, about six weeks ago I mean not even that long ago submitted his uh, his resignation uh, from from council and so we began the process of of trying to uh, find that replacement we've gone through an application process and uh, had the opportunity to have uh, both uh, Mr. Calvin Cooley and Ms. Janice Brownlee to step forward and offer themselves for service to our city. I want to publicly thank them both for being willing to step forward uh, to, to serve the city. It's a, it's a role that uh, you're representing one-sixth of the city, and um, it is a, it's a tremendous commitment. And it, just like anybody else that's served public office, they know it takes an awful lot to, uh, to step forward and, and put your name in the hat to serve. And so I want to thank you. Uh, and commend you both for for taking that uh, that opportunity. They've submitted applications. Councils had an opportunity to interview both candidates uh, earlier this evening, and uh, and I will simply say, while we can only uh, appoint one, uh, there are certainly other opportunities within the city uh, for uh, for the person who may not be appointed uh, to serve our city in other capacities. And so, uh, we're always looking for uh, for talented people that want to step forward and help the local community and so uh, again I I put it on council it's one of those things I don't get to vote so I get I get to let y'all carry it off from here we've got it to this point we've had an application process we've had interviews and you've had an opportunity to uh, to meet both candidates and now it's uh, I, I turn it over to council uh, for any further discussion uh, or if, uh, if there's a motion to be made and uh, as we do uh, typically vote a little less casually. I'd like uh, when we do get down to a vote to, to raise your right hand along with eyes so we can get those counted correctly. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this is unique. In my many years of being on council, I don't think we've ever had to do anything like this. So uh, personally, thank both of you guys for uh, putting yourselves up um, as candidates. And it's um, ultimately a, a very tough decision. Um, with that being said, I would like to make a motion uh, that we appoint uh, Mr. Calvin Cooley to replace uh, Ward 4, uh, Mr. Lindsey McDaniel, uh, for the remainder of his term. I second that motion. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 And the motion carries uh, unanimously. 
Uh, Mr. Cooley uh, will be set to be sworn in uh, at our first meeting in June, which is, I believe, June first. first. Uh, we'll uh, we'll do that at the beginning of the meeting and have uh, Mr. Cooley fill in. Ms. Brownlee, again, thank you for putting yourself up for public service and. Uh, with your application on file, we will be actively seeking some way to use your talents in the city of Cartersville. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And you're both welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to, to not. <laughs> so, uh, as, as we tell people when we do proclamations like the one we're getting ready to do. So, um, so thank you both again for your time and, uh, and for your service. The, uh, the next item we have is uh, Georgia Child Care Provider Month, and with us tonight are a group of ladies, but uh, Gloria Calhoun is representing that group. If you'll please step forward um, to the podium and talk a little bit about uh, this, and if you would, uh, your name and your address for our clerk, so we can put it in the minutes, please. Good evening. My name is Gloria Calhoun. I'm here representing Quality Care for Children. Our work address is 913 North Tennessee Street, Suite 202, here in Cartersville. Quality Care for Children works to ensure that infants and young children are nurtured and educated. We are here representing Quality Rated, which is a program that is sponsored by the Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning, which helps to assess child care programs across the state and to help identify programs that are operating above and beyond state licensing level. Our team of experts go into child care programs all over the state of Georgia, all over North Georgia, helping programs with technical assistance, with training, teaching teachers best practices so that they are providing the best quality care for our infants and young children throughout our area. Tonight we have one of our child care providers with us, this, the Sunshine House, and they are a two-star program, which shows their exemplary efforts towards a, achieving quality in, this, in the county of Bartow County. But we are very excited that this is the Child Care Appreciation Month, and we want, we are grateful that Mary Santini agreed to pro do the proclamation and to have us here today to to do this, to have this awesome opportunity. So if you'd like more information about Quality Rated and Quality Care for Children and what we are able to do for here in Bartow County with the child care providers and our youngest citizens, feel free to contact me, Gloria Calhoun, at Quality Care for Children. Thank you, Gloria. And I do have uh, the proclamation here that I will I'll read. I shouldn't have had you talk first, like I asked you to, because now everything in here is going to sound, might sound a little redundant. You did a better job than probably what's written in here. Uh, it says, uh, Georgia, whereas Georgia has more than 67,000 early care and education jobs that generate more than $2.45 billion for the state's economy, whereas Cartersville's child care industry is a vital community service that supports healthy families, creates jobs, and contributes to the local economy, and whereas Cartersville, in Cartersville, there are 17 licensed early child learning and care programs that provide nurturing safe, a nurturing safe environment for children each day to grow and thrive, whereas Cartersville's high quality earning early learning opportunities provide a strong foundation for children's healthy development and readiness to learn, whereas children who participate in Cartersville's high quality early childhood learning programs are more likely to have better behavior, be less sick during the school year, graduate high school, attend college, and engage in a sec successful career, whereas child care workers and early child educators in Cartersville tirelessly nurture and teach future generations of thinkers and achievers uh, deserving to be appreciated and recognized for their efforts. Now, therefore, I, Matthew J. Santini, Mayor of the City of Cartersville, do hereby proclaim May as Georgia Child Care Provider Month and urge my fellow citizens to join me in acknowledging the important role of child care workers and early child care educators in the care and education of our children. I'll be honored to come down and present this to you. And I know there's other members of uh, the local community that are involved in child care. If you all come on down, too, for a photo.
And as I've mentioned before, you're certainly welcome to stay and enjoy the proceedings, but you're certainly also welcome to get out and enjoy the rest of this lovely Cartersville evening that looks like it's taking place outside the window here. It is a little warm, Sam. Good point. We do have the second reading of a uh, alcohol text amendment. Mr. Menino, if you'll get us started on that. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As you noted, this is a second reading. There have been no additions or changes since the first reading. Uh, this is a proposed text amendment to the alcohol ordinance that provides definition of retail outfitter and allows for the service of malt beverages and wine pouring allowed to be allowed in designated areas uh, with that the alcohol control board did have a unanimous recommendation of approval of this and i believe mr Watkins is here representing this application okay thank you any questions for mr menino at this point mayor i do okay mr menino when i look over this section 459 in the first really the only thing that changes is we're adding retail outfitter is that is that correct that is correct and then the second e would just be the definition of what is a retail that is, is correct that, so there's very little change very little change yeah. but again kind of like a cigar bar had was had the allowance for the serving uh we had to provide um the definition of retail outfitter like we did cigar bar that's what i thought i was reading thank you okay. any other questions for mr menino at this point Thank you, sir. Is there any questions for the applicant before we take this up for consideration? Does the applicant have a burning desire to speak before we take this up for consideration? All means this may your own role. <laughs> Duly noted. Uh, council, we'll put it to you for any further discussion or for a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We have a second reading of a zoning annexation request Z17-02. Mr. Menino, if you'll please get us started with that. Uh, thank you again, Mayor and Council. Uh, again, you had noted this is a second reading. This is the second second reading. At the last <laughs> hearing, um, y'all recommended that it be forwarded back to the Planning Commission because the application did change from uh, the initial application that the Planning Commission got to review. Uh, the initial application for this proposed apartment complex at 640 North Tennessee Street was for a family apartment complex. The applicant had changed that to an age-restricted rest 55 and older community um, when he brought it before council. Um, with that information, y'all chose to send it back to Planning Commission to see if they had a different view on the proposed development. And with that, it came back with a recommendation, uh, unanimous recommendation of approval uh, from the Planning Commission uh, with the restrictions as proposed by the applicant, uh, with it being the 55 and older community. Um, with that, you now have a recommendation of approval from the Planning Commission. And we won't be looked to approve, uh, if approved, we won't be looked to, in, to enforce the deed restrictions. That's just so people around it can enforce them, right? That is correct, but it's part of a program. It'll be part of a, a DCA program, so they will have the opportunity to re go in and review uh, applications. Yeah, and, but the city uh, didn't but want to get into the business of fourth and deep restriction. No, I, I've never had code enforcement out to check IDs. Okay. Uh, okay. 55 That's and older clearly, but but the applicant is fine. Uh, yes, they is proposed that a fair it, question? It, they proposed the deed restriction. It is part of their application. Now. Okay, thank you. I wanted to make sure that. Uh, that any motion would need to have an amendment or something to note on that. So yeah, it would be per the new Planning Commission recommendation. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Menino at this point? Well, they are committed to following the guidelines. That is correct. And that's 55 and over. Yeah, there are certain guidelines how that works. I probably could not explain them accurately, um, but I believe the applicant is present that as he went over in the last meeting uh, he could probably explain them better than i could okay good all right thank you randy at this point i'll open up a public hearing relative to uh, case z17-02 and anybody wishing to step forward speak for against may do so at this time good evening mr mayor council members jeff watkins here on behalf of the applicant as uh, mr menino indicated this will be a 55 and older 
um, development and that will be a deed restriction that runs with the land that will bind any future owners of the property. And as uh, Mr. Grove indicated, that allows any neighbors, anyone, whether they're adjoining to the property or not, to enforce that deed restriction. Okay. I do have a question relative to the graphic that's on the board, and maybe I just don't remember from last time, but did the, did the plan of that, the layout of that property change from the last time? I don't believe because the, did the layout change, Mr. Yeah, no, it does, it's it's kind of it's immaterial so. to the approval. I just I just no, thought it looked a little bit different. I guess because of a senior living development. The, that the, was received today. Okay. Uh, that, the concept still is. That, that's a preliminary sure. concept. Sure, I understand. Based on based on what was proposed it, before. It was more of an observation. So we have so. I don't think we submitted one before. Okay. Regarding the development. Thank you. Like I said, that's immaterial to the. The but the applicant's uh, representative, Mr. Hammond, is here. Any questions? I'll be happy to answer any questions. Wait, as we discussed earlier, you need the kick letter as part of this. I'm sorry. Uh, the kick letter. At the end of the meeting, I'm going to request an to add it. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah, that needs to be a part of the All right. agenda. Yes, sir. Jeff, if you don't mind, walk through some are cottages and some are multi story. That's correct. <clears throat> um, Mr. Hammond, you want to go through the uh, room concept? And, and some are based on income and some not? Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Gary Hammond. I reside at 1836 with Mayor Way in Dunwoody. Um, the, the plan, something similar to this was presented to Planning Commission. Um, obviously, this late juncture, we're, um, we're moving swiftly to come up with the final design. Um, I wanted to, to come up and, and let you know that there have been no changes since Planning Commission at that meeting. I committed to, to 55 and older. Um, I um, uh, committed to uh, continue with a market rate component. Um, and the set-asides have all uh, remained the same as well as the, um, the rents that I expect to apply uh, in the application. The, um, the site plan, because of, of the senior um, uh, living component, has changed. There were three buildings. Uh, in this case, there's now two. And it's required that an elevator serve each building. Uh, you can't see the elevator on this site plan, but each building has an elevator. And then the clubhouse was out closer to North Tennessee Street. And now it's been put, um, for convenience purposes, between the two buildings. So are there cottages also included? These are uh, all called garden style or flats. So there's a th it's a three-story building, and each unit is a single level, uh, which is accessed by a an open breezeway, uh, which you can get to either by stairs or an elevator. So uh, cottages, I think of as detached um, uh, homes, uh, can be attached uh, to each other like quads, but this is uh, an apartment complex. Any other questions at this point? Part of the public hearing, if you've got anything else you want to say, or being asked a question or not. Well, the only other thing I would say is that, that you probably did not see, the last time I spoke to you, a letter uh, regarding traffic. Um, what was presented to Planning Commission included a table that compared the, um, the traffic counts for uh, family apartments versus a convenience center, office development, retail, and senior apartments. And I would like to draw your attention that in, um, in the case of total traffic counts, uh, by far the senior apartments is the lowest traffic count um, compared to buy right uses. Um, and the, uh, the number of trips out in the morning and the number of trips in in the evening uh, are uh, lowest other than the fact that in an office development um, nobody would be leaving in the morning typically uh, so it, it is the least impact on traffic I believe thank you okay. thank you somebody parked their car over there or something <laughs> <laughs> what was that? somebody not have their phone on vibrate what was that May I have a question of Wade? If you okay, don't uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, Ms. Tate has a question for you, please, sir, if you'll step forward. 
Mr. Wilson, I know a, a lot of this is addressed under development regs, but Tennessee Street is a state highway. That is correct. And I don't know exactly how it will be designed, but it's pretty close to a traffic signal already. Yes. What would it be? 75 yards from a traffic signal, maybe? So. That's good. You don't know off the top of your head? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, about. I mean, I'm, yes. I'm just kind of guessing. So, yes. um, they, won't, they can't put a traffic signal there. So, they'll have to take into consideration egress and degress, or what will they? Yeah, what? Georgia Department of Transportation would, mm -hmm. uh, they'd have to permit their entrance, and, you know, most likely in that scenario would have a, uh, probably have a desail lane. Um, uh, but they would look at the proximity proximity to the intersection uh, but yeah that would probably be a little too close for uh, another uh, intersection I don't know that it would warrant that anyways but I'm just, not, I was not really something we have control over is it? Nope. But I was uh, just, that would be George I was wondering at his best guess is working with DOT. Yeah I, I, I do not think that it would require a signal there. And who's responsible for the uh, lanes would be the developer or Who's responsible for the desal? That's and that would be Georgia Department of Transportation, also. Okay. Yep, it would, uh, um, and they would do all that permitting through our local district office. Okay. <coughs> Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We are still in the midst of a public hearing for Z17-02. Anybody wishing to step forward, speak for against, may do so at this time. And seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and turn it to council for further discussion. Uh, or, if not, a motion would be in order. I'd like to offer a motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Did that have oh, I'm sorry. The, the no, I said aye. Oh, okay. I didn't. Did that have the conditions from the Planning Commission? Act? The motion yes. was, was with the application, and then the application had included okay. The, okay. the condition okay. from the... Just check. Thank you. That is a very important distinction. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you just sat back down, but you're wise enough to be in the front. A couple first readings of ordinances. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, this is the first reading of uh, or an ordinance revision uh, to add five new no through truck streets to Chapter 12 or a motor and uh, motor vehicle and traffic ordinance. Uh, these streets were added. Uh, for various reasons, including physical restrictions that limit truck movement, incorrect Google map application directions, and horizontal and vertical alignment limitations that make it best to restrict trucks from these areas. Public Works does recommend approval of this ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Wade on this revision? All right. Thank you. It is our first reading. We'll take it up at our first meeting in June. Thank and the next one, please, sir. This also is the first reading of an ordinance revision to six, two chapter 12 of the motor vehicle and traffic uh, ordinance. Uh, this is to restrict the type of uh, truck engine brakes in certain residential area, areas. It specifically creates a no engine brake area on parts of West Avenue and Etowah Drive. Uh, there were some complaints there uh, from some residences and uh, this, is, uh, this is a recommended uh, 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 ordinance revision. Okay. Any discussion on this item? Can we add Tennessee Street to it? <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what does that actually mean? Does it mean they're gearing down? Is that? Is, <laughs> I'm not really sure. That it I was hoping I wouldn't have to explain uh, brakes because I'm a civil engineer, not a mechanical okay. engineer. But um, the uh, yes, there, it's air brakes. Uh, they make a loud noise when they're gearing down, and so it's, it's it, it is loud in the community. I mean, I've um, heard it, but I just didn't right. I don't know if I need to make the noise. I, I, my. <laughs> <laughs> what does it sound like, Wade? <laughs> um, Thank you. Any other questions? Just to hear the noise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once again, this is the first reading. We'll take it up for final consideration, our first meeting in June. Thank, Thank you, Wade. You. You've got one more item. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I have, uh, we have this solid waste. I uh, would like to purchase two hydraulic cylinders uh, from Waste Built. Uh, for a total of $5,428.58. Uh, cylinders on one of our front loading uh, 
garbage trucks uh, were leaking, had problems. We checked with the manufacturer. It was on a four-month uh, back order, and we did find two in a parts warehouse, and we would like uh, approval to purchase this, uh, uh, these two cylinders. Obviously a budgeted item. This is a budgeted item. Thank you. Um, questions, comments, or motions? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor to get by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you, Wade. Uh, Bob, you got the next three, please, sir. Mr. Jones. Thank you. I think first up we have a uh, distribution uh, office copier. Uh, we've got a machine that is worn out. It's, it exceeds my tenure here with the city. Uh, we've gotten into the classic technology problem where we can't get parts, we can't get service. You, you know the story. Uh, had uh, David Stiles uh, spec and bid a machine for us. This would be the identical copier that we purchased for the uh, water admin building uh, about a year ago. Um, I'd like to thank David also because he worked very hard with uh, Canon to get us into some pricing program that he can explain to you better than I can. But the, uh, the results of it is it's about a 500, almost $600 savings over what we purchased last year. So would uh, recommend that for your approval. Uh, that total price is $6,837. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments, or motions? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate the saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Continue please, Bob. Uh, next up we have uh, <laughs> annually we purchase a number of fire hydrants uh, just to have on stock. Uh, these serve as replacements for the ones that get hit by trucks and damaged. Uh, that we find during the course of the year that are dysfunctional that uh, the fire department uh, finds when they do their hydrant flow testing annually. Uh, this just gives us an ability to respond quickly to fire hydrants that are out of service. Uh, we took bids for this material and the low bid this year was Kindle Supply at $24,659.20 and would recommend that for your approval. Okay. Any discussion? If not, a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor and again by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Continue, Bob. Uh, last up for the water department, uh, I'd like to uh, ask your approval to purchase a uh, second sewer push camera. This is a camera that we can insert down uh, uh, various size pipes, really from two inch up to about eight inch, and we use that to diagnose and locate problems uh, that, that are blockages or pipe defects. And what it does is it helps us to target where the problem is. I mean, if you can appreciate on, on your street that you live in, if we can come out and dig one five foot square hole instead of digging a strip up and down the street in order to find the problem, it, it's beneficial to all of us. Uh, we purchased a camera exactly like this in 2013 and it has become indispensable, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, this particular camera will be purchased for use by our engineering department. Uh, it, it will be used to chase down I&I, &I, uh, to inspect new construction where needed, to verify that, that uh, you know, pipe's not out of round, that there's not a problem with construction. Uh, the low bid was from Ferguson Waterworks at $11,319.27. And would we'll ask your approval of that. Okay. My notes indicate that this is $6,000 cheaper than the one you bought in 13. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a pertinent fact. We, uh, we purchased this one in 2013. It was $17,000 and change. We did make a slight equipment change in this. It won't go as far, but that's, that's really no more than half of the, the price savings. It's just uh, the, the, the better <laughs> pricing on the same unit. Thank you. Any discussion? If not, a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you, Bob. Mr. Hasselbrock. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. The uh, electric department has a group of a, a group of equipment that we have on our system that helps us when we have power outages. It, it helps us with automatic restoration, and uh, we we've, we've lost that automatic restoration because of the communications uh we there's old 2g communications and if, if y'all know anything about technology 2g has gone out the window that's uh 4g <laughs> and uh, this company no longer offers it to us and so uh to to f remedy the problem we've teamed up with uh, uh fibercom 
has agreed to provide us with signaling back to our headquarters if we'll update the control panels on the reclosers. And so that's, uh, and it, it, the system we're talking about will also be able to, in the future, add more automation to our system. So we're uh, getting good bang for the buck there. And we put it out for bid, and we've got uh, two bids, and the lowest bid was $28,600, and that's with uh, power connections. And uh, this is budgeted, uh, budgeted item to upgrade this, and uh, we're asking you to accept the uh, low bid. Okay, thank you. Without dumbing this down too much, a lot of times when we see the lights blink, that says we're closer. Sure, yes, yes. That the circuit will go back the other way and keep the right. power. Hmm. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? If not, a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, indicate okay by saying aye. Aye. Right. Motion carries unanimously. Thank, Thank you, Don. Mr. Porter, you got the next three, please, sir. Yes, Mayor. The first one is uh, Telenet Systems did some work for us to install three new customers at a cost of five thousand seven hundred thirty dollars, and I recommend this for your approval. Thank you. Questions, Scott? Quick question on that one. Was there anybody else locally that could do that? Do we ask other people? Uh, not at this time. They're experts in the fiber. Uh, I can check the staff and make sure they've yeah. been doing work for us uh, when we're not, don't have time permitting to do that. But I will check. Okay. Motion to approve. Thank you. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. The next item, Mayor, is the workers' compensation third party administrator. We've been using USIS for the last uh, 10 years. The price for this, we, this is our next fiscal year contract for you is uh, for $9,900 for them to continue on as a third party administrator and I recommend this for your approval. Okay. Questions, comments, or motions? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Last item for you, Dan. Yes, sir. This is the Georgia Department of Transportation contract for the airport. Uh, we've had some prior discussions with the city council regarding some property we need for storm drainage and uh, for the airport runway protection zone. This is uh, to meet the GDOT's end of fiscal year, which is June 30, just like ours. They will set aside the money based on the appraisal value they have, which will be uh, we'll need to set aside as we proceed forward in that process. Uh, just a recommend approval based on the city attorney reviewing the documents, which I've not received officially. They're in the, in the works, and then the mayor and city clerk uh, to sign those documents as after approved by city attorney. Okay, so motion should state that uh, pending approval of city attorney. Uh, chair will entertain a motion if there's no discussion. Make a motion to approve pending the approval by the city attorney. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We'll probably wait until Keith gets back. Wouldn't we, wouldn't we be prudent to do that? I beg pardon? We'll wait for Keith to get back to do that? No, I don't want to see Mr. That would be me. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir, Mayor and Council. Uh, this first item is a change order from Cardinal Fence. It really involves two change orders. Uh, the first change order is a uh, savings to the city uh, where I had requested a uh, different type of uh, connection for a top rail, which uh, resulted in a uh, savings of $624.88. The second change order is uh, for the en uh, enlarging of our knee walls uh, for our six backstops. Uh, increased it uh, two foot in length and six inches in height, resulted in a change order of $10,503.02, total change order $9,860.14, and I recommend approval. Okay. Oh, well, those knee walls do look really good out there at the fields. They do. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, nice. we, uh, we got them sealed last week. We finally had where it quit raining, got them sealed. They look very good now. Good. Good job. Uh, any discussion, if not a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. Second item is uh, a change order from Lou Island Construction. Uh, this is for our uh, our leak mounds, uh, Etowah Riverwalk Link. Uh, after they have been on site doing the grading area, there's three three areas that uh, low areas that must be addressed that require the digging out of the soft soils. Uh, putting back a uh, surge stone and a filler, uh, also installing catch basins, uh, and then a slight shift in alignment uh, 
to uh, save from having to take down the fencing or the bank for the existing little about a 7,000 square foot area the city now has fenced in. Uh, this change orders total $37,897.07. Uh, there is money uh, in this budget to pay for the majority of this. Uh, I do expect additional change orders to come down. Uh, what I'm hearing, those change orders will be uh, uh, addition or savings to the city. He does. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? Yes, sir. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor to keep by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Chief McCann. Good evening, Mayor Council. This is a request to surplus a 2008 Dodge Charger patrol vehicle and donate it to the city of Emerson. They requested this in order to help them start a take home uh, vehicle program. That vehicle was purchased with uh, federal asset forfeiture money in 2008, and it wouldn't be cost effective for us to repair it. However, all the equipment in the vehicle that can be reused will be reused. By us? By us. Okay. Perfect. All right. Mayor, a comment. You and I were in a meeting today, and the discussion from outside people, outside of Cartersville, was how we work with other cities within the county, how we work with the county, and, and this is a perfect example. I'm, I'm glad it's working out, Chief. Yes, and we've done this in the past, and also I checked with the city attorney, or the assistant city attorney, and it's appropriate. Well, you checked with me, but I never did call you back. Well, Keith did, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm happy we can do it. I, I make a motion to approve. I'm Thank you. I had a motion and a second. All in favor to keep by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Sam, you have the quick claim deed, please? Yeah, the title company for the purchaser of the property that uh, the school sold adjacent to, to the middle school has asked for this additionally, a, a quick claim deed on that property, and it's recommended for your approval. Okay. Any discussion? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. All in favor of the gate by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. We do have one item to add to the agenda this evening. Uh, if I can get a motion to add that item. Motion to add. Second. All in favor of the gate by saying aye. 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 Item aye. is added. Mr. Menino. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, as a staff of the Georgia Initiative of Community Housing, or the city of Carsville staff, we'll have to be writing a letter of support for a Georgia Initiative Community Housing, or GIC, uh, support letter for a project. With that, there will also need to be a letter of agreement written from the mayor. I'd like to request that you authorize the mayor to sign a letter of support per staff's recommendation when we write this letter on Tuesday. What if I feel different from the staff's recommendation? And then there'll be no no city of Cartersville projects. And, and that's the reason for the department. Of, but th that is the reason for the Department of Community Affairs request for a uh, letter of support from the uh, elected officials. Because there has been occasion where the GIC team has recommended a certain project that council or would that particular jurisdiction is uh, not in favor of. So, you know, it, it's a checks and balance. So you're balance. dictating to me what letter I'm going to sign, basically. And, and if you choose not to sign, that's that's just part of the process. Thank you, Randy. And we're not talking about project we approve tonight. This is another one. There are two projects that we will evaluate. We would have had them ready in a resolution ready to go tonight, but the zoning process got delayed a couple of weeks, so we are two weeks behind. Uh, the deadline for the two developers looking to do a project, I believe, is the 25th of this month. So we planned on having a letter out on Tuesday. But the second project is the property on Felton Road adjacent to the Housing Authority property. Um, I believe that it is a proposal for uh, 50 uh, single family, no, yeah, 50 single uh, or multifamily uh, residential units. Uh, apartment complex on that property. It's currently zoned MF-14, so it didn't have to go through the zoning process. It is not a senior project. Yeah, a, a question. If there are two projects, there's no reason the city could give that required 
approval for both projects? Yes, they're only allowed to write one support letter. Per the DCA rules, I don't care. Really? Yeah. That is. Okay. When you get so the other project will have to wait a year, um, potentially. Yes, and again, every year there's different scoring methods for these projects, so I don't know if Cartersville will, will have uh, higher scoring ratings next year. And again, I can't speak for how, how the projects run. Um, this is the first time, at one point, we had seven different projects, developers coming in here looking uh, for support letters for their projects. It's now narrowed down to two. And well, Jeff looks like he's going to pop. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're requesting is for council to authorize the mayor to sign the support letter per staff's recommendation. Motion to approve. But Lucia, the look on your face like you've got another question. It seems to me we're asking to prove something you don't know very much about. Uh, this is so the, the project you just approved the zoning on to get financing. Yes, the one on Tennessee Street. Oh, I thought it was well, there's, there, this, there, there is another one. Projects. We'll be sending out a matrix and information on the one we'll be choosing, and we'll send it out to everybody, And but we will need to have the mayor to be authorized to write a support letter. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. It's not a whole lot different than the support letter that you give to the homeless shelter every year. It just got different requirements. It's a DCA budget. Everybody good? Uh, More questions? Bob just got twisted. <laughs> okay. All right, so I did have a motion somewhere. Carrie made a motion. Thank you. Ms. Hodge, you made a motion. Yes, thank you. thank you. And I'll second. Thank you. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Randy. Mr. Reinhardt, the finance report, please, sir. Yes, says he believes in the finances. Honorable Mayor and Council, we'll be looking at the um, Financial report for March 2017 and comparing it to March 2016. And the general fund revenues decreased over last March by $10.5 million. This is due to the school system paying off bonds early in 2016. Expenses have decreased also by uh, about $10.3 million, again, due to the uh, school bond uh, being paid off early. Three areas of revenue that I look at on a monthly basis, local option sales tax, we have an increase there for the second month in a row of about $81,000. Police fines and forfeitures have a decrease there of about $63,000. And billing permits and inspection fees have an increase there of about $75,000. The water and sewer fund revenues increased over the last year by $1.5 million. Expenses increased by $377,000. This is due to increased operating expenses, increased debt service expenses, and increased capital expenses. And the gas fund revenues increased over last year by $1.6 million. Expenses increased by $1.4 million. This is due to increased operating expenses and increased cost of purchase gas. And the electric fund revenues decreased from last year by $162,000. Expenses decreased by $827,000. This is due to decreased operating expenses, decreased cost of electricity, and decreased capital expenses. And the stormwater fund revenues increased over last year by $35,000, expenses increased by $167,000. This is due to increased personnel expenses, increased operating expenses, and increased capital expenses. We have been carrying for several months now, a, 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 I guess it's a prepayment, we, we actually um, are expecting a GMA lease pool in both the uh, stormwater and the, and the solid waste fund. I believe they will come through in the month of April, so those should be going back to fairly good in standing. And the solid waste fund revenues decreased over last year by $21,000 and expenses increased by $54,000. This is due to increased personnel expenses and increased capital expenses. And finally, in the fiber optics fund revenues increased over last March by $38,000 and expenses decreased by $88,000. This is due to decreased operating expenses, decreased debt service expenses, and decreased capital expenses. That's my report for the evening. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Tom on the finance report? Mr. Grove, any comments? Yeah, uh, general fund, electric, and stormwater were in deficit for the month. The reimbursements that he mentioned should improve not only stormwater but solid waste. Uh, the loss in electric.
electric fund is probably due to the three rate cuts we've had in the last year. If you look year to date only, solid waste is uh, in deficit and unrestricted cash is trending steady. Very good. Any other questions about the finance report? Any other business that needs to come before council this evening? Please step forward, sir. Come on up, and if, uh, again, if you'll give your name and your address for our clerk, please. <clears throat> my name is Clay Bennett. Um, my address is 751 Callaway Drive, Rockmore, Georgia. I didn't know we had the high tech TV, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this over with me. That's fine. Just make sure everybody, including the clerk, gets one. I don't have a copy for everybody. Make sure she's got one. Thank you. Again, my name is Clay. Thank you for hearing me tonight. Um, I'm the partial owner or majority owner of the shopping center located at 1010 North Tennessee Street. I'm also the condominium association president. Um, I'm here today to bring to the council's attention an ongoing ordinance violation that's been happening for over a year and a half and the city's failure to enforce the ordinance. Um, before I get into my timeline of what was going on or what's going on to give an overview, the shopping center is set up as a professional condominium. That means or it's comprised of 25 units. I own 22 units. Um, the Okinawa restaurant owns two units, and the Los Arcos restaurant owns the separate building, <clears throat> and it's a unit in itself. The, uh, the, the parking area and all the surrounding land on the, the condominium is owned by the it's private property that's owned by the uh, common elements or the condominium association. <clears throat> Um, I'll get started on the timeline. In October of 2015, the Los Arcos restaurant moved from Highland Crossing up to the building they're presently in. Um, upon their arrival, they, on the, the pictures you have to see stapled together, has a one on it. You can see that they are started using my personal dumpster that I provide for my tenants. They were not only using it, but they were uh, trash, leaving the trash all the way around um, the outside of it and in the, all around the common elements. <clears throat> I called to complain to the city, and their response was, we're going to handle it, we'll issue them a warning, and we will get them to have their own dumpster. Um, they did get a dumpster out there, but they continued to overflow my dumpster and their dumpster and continued to pollute all around the uh, common elements area. I called the uh, city attorney, uh, uh, the um, the city again, and asked, complained. They said that they'll issue another warning, and they issued me a combination lock for my um, dumpster to prevent them from using mine. Coincidentally, three days later, you can see in the picture uh, with the two circled on the front page of it, um, the combination lock was brought was broken, and they continued using the dumpster. Did you file a report for that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, again, like I said, I filed a report with that, continued on going on. Um, I didn't bring, or I didn't bring up all of them. I have close to 50 pictures here where they continue to uh, overflow the dumpsters, uh, you know, litter all around the common elements area. I continued to complain on a regular basis. No action was taken. I eventually uh, had their dumpster removed from the uh, or the condominium association had their dumpster removed from the premises um, and again this was reported to the city uh, any business not having a dumpster or a litter container is a direct violation of the city ordinance um, section 21-27 uh, I notified the city of this again no action was taken what about was the, what about I'm sorry to keep jumping in what no about, you're fine what about was the was the date where you had their dumpster removed? It was uh, March of 2016. Okay. Um, I continued to complain. Uh, eventually, the city, um, and again, I know there's a process that seemed to be dragging out, but this is over the course of six months, and again, the pictures, you, those are just a fraction of the pictures that just got passed around. Um, it was affecting the tenants, myself, and the businesses there. 
Um, we were getting threatened to be sued by the, the people who live across the street on Guyton Street because their trash was blowing over. Um, there's a picture there where their cooking grease was left out and between the smell and the trash and rodents and insects, it was creating a huge problem. Um, like, uh, eventually the city did take them, issue a citation. They were taken to court in May of 2016. Um, they were issued an order uh, of a 700, or an order that they were required to have a, a city approved a dumpster and they were issued a fine of $750. That is a fraction of what I spent to clean up the mess they left over the course of six months. Okay. Just as a point of clarification, as you go through this, the city of Cartersville, these people up here don't determine what a fine amount is. So Understandable. Just, just, as a, just as a point of clarification. So Fair continue, enough. Continue. The, the reason I point out the, uh, the fine is because that is barely a slap on the wrist for six months of what they've been doing and continue to do for the, a year and a half. Obviously, it wasn't enough to detour them because fast forward to uh, earlier this month, uh, my property manager uh, notified me that they were placing uh, plastic containers. There's a picture floating around that's uh, dated May 2nd. You can see they, uh, in the back of their building, they have four, uh, four containers that are not up to code. Uh, they have two tires, scrap wood, boxes, kegs, not to mention the smell that's uh, lingering around on a hot day. Um, I contacted the city again, and I was told it would be handled within 24 hours. 48 hours passed, it's still the same. Nothing's happened. Um, I got in touch with Mr. Stepp. I copied you on an email and you know, was told they were issued citations and this would be taken to court and handled. I was assured that um, you know, we, more action would be taken, that more, there would be more uh, bite with the bark, per se. Um, well, I showed up to the court that day and expecting to see something happen and instead, uh, Mr. Lovell uh, deferred it for two more, two, put it off for two weeks and threatened the condominium association with a fine for not allowing them to have a dumpster on the property. And I want to reiterate that that is private property. We do not own their building. I emailed Mr. Lovell and asked him what ordinance we'd be violating that he would want to cite us on, and he quoted section 21-27. And I'm going to read the first sentence of that. It says, every owner, occupant, tenant, or lessee using or occupying any commercial, institutional, or industrial building. I want to reiterate, we do not own that. The condominium association or myself does not own that building, occupy, lease, or rent that building. That is the Los Arcos restaurant, they own that building themselves. They do not have rights to the uh, surrounding property. Um, it's not our obligation to provide them with a place to put their dumpster or to house their trash. Um, in closing, I want to reiterate that this has gone on for a year and a half. The, if you realize to go behind their building, that trash is still there. We got deferred for two weeks. I'm sorry, it's not the same trash. If they've got trash back there, if you turn, if you, it's not the same trash that was there a couple weeks ago. Um, they still have the container, the tires, the wood. But, it, but it's not the same trash that was here, as you just said, from two, three weeks ago. Same, I'm, I'm not sure what you're You said the same trash is still there. It's not the same trash. Are they, Some of are, it. Are you saying they're continuing to litter and leave their trash behind their building? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. That's, I just wanted to make some that of statement. it is Thank the same you. as far as they are emptying the containers and refilling them with daily with their trash, but some of it like the scrap wood, the tires, the kegs, and they have miscellaneous other things you can see in the picture that's still there. Okay, thank you. So basically they're using that back side as their dump site. And they're, that is not their property. It's no different than me coming to your house and putting my trash in your yard. Um, my question is the, to the council is, uh, what can we do to fix this problem? Let me ask a question. I'm a little bit confused. Is this pending in the municipal court as we speak? I mean, is there, are there charges pending against the Condominium Association, Los Arcos, you, anybody relating to this? Um, there are, I asked what citations were going to be issued. They said they couldn't disclose what was going to be issued to them. Uh, they are, we're supposed to go back to court Monday. Well, if it's in court, this city council legally can't 
can't tell the judge what to do or not to do. It's like separation of powers. This is a legislative body. That's the judicial system. You have enforcement and you have ordinances that are, if they are violated, arguing in court and the judge will make a decision, but counsel can't, can't advise the judge or tell the judge what to do. I understand that's kinda, that. That's kind of like what they're saying Trump did, you know. <laughs> I mean, so we can't do what they fussing at Trump for doing, point trying to make. Well, so, my question is, it's been ignored for a year and a half, and the judge hasn't even had an opportunity to see it. I, and again, I would, knowing you obviously, you've lived through it, and I tell anybody that, that calls me about a code enforcement issue that I'll use the example of, well, I don't, I'll use your example. You know, if there's a citation, there is a, unfortunately, and you know this all too well, there is a process. If I've got a neighbor that doesn't cut his grass for three months, and I finally get sick and I call the city, well, the city goes out there and puts a note on their door and tells them they've got to cut the lawn for within 30 days. Well, if they don't cut their lawn for another 30 days, they get cited and they get sent to city court, which may take another 30 days. They may go to city court and the judge gives them 30 days to clean up the mess. So in the meantime, it's been six months by the time they decide to do something. And I, underst and I understand the frustration of that process, but it is part of more of the legal process than the legislative. Now, um, so I, I don't, I would, I would respectfully disagree that the city hasn't done anything. They probably haven't done it. Uh, obviously, we're not gonna agree on whether it's been done to anybody's satisfaction because you've been dealing with, with garbage smells all around your building. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say What do you think I'm a fair time table would be? I'm not gonna say that's acceptable. I'm not gonna say that that's, that that's something I would wanna put up with. Um, but I do know that, because I happen to be uh, doing business with one of the businesses that are in that section, I guess the day that uh, the garbage was taken off, uh, this was about two weeks ago, maybe? Uh, now, if there's more, if there's still more garbage out there, I guess my advice to you would, because I do know that they, that the city, instead of starting an entire process, since there was already this judgment um, back in May of 16 that you referred to, that we were able to haul them back into the court that Monday, which I guess would have been the, the not, May the 9th. Uh, that was the hearing that I think you went May to. May the 8th, yes. Um, and you also know that part of all this that's tied up is even though it's tied up in city court, I also know that there's a civil litigation that you're involved with with that business as well. That kind of that kind of it is irrelevant it, to them putting it, trash it, on it, our it is, property. It is irrelevant to the fact that uh, that I'm trying to recount my conversation with Mr. Lovell about this. But the truth of the matter is, there are there is an ordinance to be to be to be found. But there's also the determination as to whether or not. I guess what Keith was trying to do is trying to make the judge make the determination as to who's who's at fault instead of him him making that determination. Since that's not really his role is to is to find out who's who's at fault. And Again, I'm, you can check the tax records. That property's in my name. They're putting trash on my property it, again a year and a half I understand there's a process but a year and a half and I understand it's not y'all's job to make the ruling but who do I go to when I'm being ignored over the course of a year and a half on something no you're, you've come to the right place I'm not and again I'm not saying that you don't have to write to be upset or angry and I'm not saying that I, that you shouldn't have come here to us right I'm not I'm not saying that at all I applaud anybody that comes up here to tell us about a problem and um, but like I said right now as, as Mr. Archer stated it's in the judicial process that, and, and there's really not anything that this group can do to solve that. Now, relative to anything that might be able to be done from an ordinance perspective, um, you know, I'm guessing once there is a ruling by that judge, and if the judge says that they need to provide a dumpster, or the judge says that you don't have to provide space for them to have that dumpster, um, then, you know, the city's got to enforce the ordinances without bias to, to one side or the other. So I think that's what we're waiting for is for that judge to make whatever determination that is so that we can move forward and either say you've got to provide a dumpster form or you don't based on what that judge says. Yes, sir. That's the way I understand it. Well, again, last, I don't know why it wasn't handled when it went to court two weeks ago. I don't know why it's deferred. I'm not questioning, well, I am questioning that. But when I go up there, I wasn't even supposed to be up there and I get caught up there and I get threatened with a fine because I'm not allowing a business I have no association or ownings or you know interest in 
why well, I'm not allowing them to have a dumpster on my property. Why am I getting threatened with a fine? Oh, uh, I don't know who the city attorney answers to or, you know. I do. <laughs> I answer to them. So. David, it's private property. Them. Why don't they have to have a dumpster? I'm sorry, what? If the restaurant's on private property, why don't they have to have their own dumpster? You know, the is, the issue is, is they don't have but let me, private wait, 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 property. Wait, wait. We don't need to discuss the merits of a matter that is before the judge in this, you know, and I don't need to give legal advice in an open meeting about an issue that is before the judge. The judge will have to make a determination. Is that what you're doing Monday? Are you in front of the judge or are you just supposed to be meeting back with Keith? And that they're just supposed to go before the judge. They were told that they were going to get a citation issued to them if they didn't clean it up, and it's not cleaned up. There's an ordinance here that, in, that says if somebody's littered on public or private property, that the city can come clean it up and charge the person they clean it up for. My question is why? Why isn't something like that taking place? And again, this body can't answer that. Now, the public works department ultimately answers to the mayor and council, no question about that. But on the enforcement issues, the city council cannot direct about what the discretionary determination is about its employees in the enforcement of ordinance. It just can't do it. I mean, I'm not saying it's never done, but I can say it never should be done. Yes, sir. Yeah, but you know, you're between a rock and a hard place, and I don't know anything about it, but I'll guarantee you one thing, I'm going to find out about it. Fair enough. I'm going to Thank find you. out about it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No, appreciate right. you coming. I appreciate you coming. Thank the you for listening. For us. Is there any other business that needs to come before council this evening? I need to remind you all that we've got a budget work session next Tuesday night, four to six here. Budget work session, Tuesday, four to six. Right here. Yeah. Very good. Anything else? Not chair one ten motion to adjourn. So I move. Adjourn. Stay gold. <laughs>